through our ongoing Finding Hope series over the last two years, we've been looking into trends surrounding substance abuse and addiction. And while opioids have led to thousands of overdose deaths around the country, they're not the only drug to blame. Six on your side's Karen Lear joins us live in studio to explain in tonight's Finding Hope. Well, Don, according to the CDC, a majority of opioid overdose deaths are now also involving some other type of drug like cocaine, methamphetamine, or benzodiazepines. And tonight, we take a look at what you need to know about benzos. You've probably heard of Xanax, Valium, or Clonopin. They're all benzodiazepines, a type of drug used to treat anxiety, panic disorder, sleeping issues, and even seizures. When taken for a short period of time under the care of a physician, they can be helpful, but when abused, they can be deadly. Doctors need them for all kinds of services. Xanax, for instance, the one that gets abused the most is in fact um, very helpful with nausea at cancer centers. And so people depend on this medicine. The difficulty is that now over the last uh, 15 years or so, uh, teenagers have um, seemingly uh, been involved with these benzodiazepines. Dr. Ron Larson, medical director for Optum Idaho, says that's led to a 54% increase in teenage drug overdoses over that same period of time. According to the CDC, 63% of opioid overdose deaths involved some other type of drug. One third of those deaths involved benzodiazepines. They're a medicine that is like alcohol. Uh, they take them as a pill. They're called minor tranquilizers and they're actually uh, habit forming like alcohol. Benzos can enhance the effects of opioid painkillers, giving the combination a highly addictive quality. When combined, breathing is significantly suppressed, leading to a lack of oxygen to the brain and even death. First of all, they can relax you. That's uh, their described, prescribed uh, use. After that though, uh, they're almost like alcohol too. You can become intoxicated. You can look intoxicated, you can have trouble walking. And so if you're on a benzodiazepine, you can actually, in driving your car, uh, be pulled over for OMVI, for driving under the influence, when in fact it might be a benzodiazepine. Dr. Larson says the medical community has improved practices over the past two decades, learning benzodiazepines are best used for less than two weeks at a time. If you're in the hospital and your arm and your leg are in a cast and you have to go home and you have to sleep up to two weeks worth, might help. So a lot of people might wonder why a doctor would ever prescribe the right. two drugs knowing that they have these dangers, but it's also important to remember that they're used to treat different conditions and you could be getting these prescriptions from different doctors. So if somebody has a Vicodin prescription for, you know, long-term chronic pain, they could then get a Xanax prescription from their therapist and not realize that these lines are being crossed. So you always want to talk with your doctors about what other medications you're currently taking. Yeah, absolutely. Good advice if you're taking any new prescriptions is to let them know what everything else you're taking. And then also keep in mind other things that might work for you as well. Ask your doctor about alternatives like, you know, meditation or exercise that could help ease anxiety. And then keep in mind your personal um, potential for addiction before you start any new prescriptions. All right. Thanks, Karen.